nine, 10 years ago, my wife started to encourage me to go out on my own. And I'm very fortunate that she did that because I had no desire to run my own company. I now have two companies. She has two companies also. Um, and my wife identified that I liked what I did. I liked my clients and my clients seemed to like me. So initially the why was very client centric. And what I mean by that is um, I was a strong advocate. I'm wired that way. Um, when I was a little kid, if there was a fight, I would be the one to intervene. Even though I'm not a big person, I, I would be the one to intervene because I'm just wired as an advocate. Welcome to Rochester Business Connections, powered by Balbert Marketing, LLC, where I get the chance to chat with Rochester, New York's very best business owners, entrepreneurs, and thought leaders. I am your host, Ben Albert. Don't forget to subscribe and remember, we don't do advertisements. My fee for this show is simple. If you gain value from the episode, personally share with a friend and explain your favorite part. Let's get started. Welcome everyone to Rochester Business Connections. I am here with Blake Weber. Blake, what are we how are we doing today? You're looking sharp for what it's worth. Thank you so much. I, I'm doing well, all things considered. Hey, it's 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 snowing today in Rochester. Very interesting to see that. Um, but I'm I'm super happy to be talking to you today. You are an attorney for real estate agents, right? So you take people that make lives happy, commercial and residential real estate, and you're behind the scenes making it possible. Uh, you know the business better than me. Yeah, let's get a bird's eye view of exactly what you do at your firm. Wonderful. Well, what's nice is a, as an attorney, a lot of people don't associate attorney with something positive. So I'm very fortunate that my area of law focuses on a positive experience 99% of the time. <laughs> and so myself and my team are in a position where we get to assist people for purchasing a home, selling a home, purchasing a business, selling a business. Um, and that's a very rewarding because we're really just educating and protecting our clients, uh, which is a very nice position to be in. Um, and thankfully for me, I have a whole team of people that support Weber Law. Uh, a lot of people associate Weber Law with myself, Blake Weber, but in reality, my success is tied uh, completely with my team. And I have a team of lawyers, support staff, and paralegals that do a great job that keep Weber Law moving forward. Hey, we were talking about it a moment ago. It's it's good to build a good team because you can be a strong leader, but you're only as strong as the people around you, right? Absolutely. You, you work with real estate agents. We're talking big personalities. We're talking eccentric people. We're talking about all kinds of, you know, personalities in real estate. I'm just curious what the, how you like that, how you navigate the different personalities in real estate and what you love about, you know, what you do at Weber Law. Well, one thing that's really nice with the personalities we deal with is uh, one, I am one. I, I'm one of the louder uh, attorneys in the area. There's a lot of great attorneys, but if you were to ask industry professionals, who's one that stands out, um, I would suspect I would be at least in contention for that. So for me, we try to quickly identify what personalities we're dealing with. We'll have people that have an engineering background, so we'll make a little notation to the file. Um, and my father's an engineer and I started in engineering. So I'm very, I'm very good at identifying and then based on identifying, um, as long as I'm correct, interacting with people. So it's nice if we have someone who's very, um, you, you know, kind of a control freak, which actually I am. So it's not hard for me to interact with other control freaks. Um, there's a lot of emotions in real estate, whether you're a client, uh, whether you're a real estate agent or a loan officer. And so it's just navigating that. And sometimes I think the thing that serves me the best on the team, I'm the one that addresses the personality. So when there's an issue, I'm usually the one that's brought in. And 99% of the time, it's good to bring me in. 1%, I'm not that good. I'm not 100%. Um, but 
usually it's the ability to say no. So when you have a client, when you have an agent that's just pushing you and because of a personality issue, uh, they just want you to do something a certain way, we're in a position to say no. We will part ways with clients or referral sources if our values don't align or if the client would be potentially harmed. And interesting to clients that will harm themselves and for us to threaten to withdraw. It rarely happens. Uh, it does happen, but it rarely happens. Usually once we give a flat no and there's no one further up the, the hierarchy that they can get. So once they get to me, it's kind of it. Then when they're asking for something we're not willing to do, it's very blunt, direct answers. And that usually has a chilling effect. Um, and either people will elect not to use this again, or at times they actually go, I'm really impressed. I was really pushing you. I have a big book of business. I thought you would cave. And our obligations are to our clients. And they're very clearly um, outlined. It's not often that we run into a situation that there's ambiguity of right, what the right answer is. There's often burdens of uh, our interests, so financial. Um, however, our interests are never at the forefront. Um, and it's fun to talk to clients and express, I'm telling you to do something that is adverse to my financial position. Like if you listen to my advice, I will earn less money, but my job <laughs> is to inform you and allow you to make an informed decision. But I'm telling you, please listen to me. You'll pay me less. This will go easier. So it's a really interesting dynamic. I, I like a lot of what you said there. I want to highlight kind of two points. First off, just the ability, you guys, it sounds like you're morphing and tailoring based on your client's needs. It's not a square peg round hole. And another important thing you said is just being able to say no, walking away if it's not a good relationship, taking less income if it's better for them to make this decision. I think those are all great things. Um, you obviously must have a very strong why. I'm wondering whether it's through a mission statement or a series of events what brought you into this role where you are today and what is the why? What keeps you going every day to be doing what you're doing? Well, that's a good question. Um, and it's interesting because it's adjusted over the last 10 years. So Weber Law is coming up on in the next few months, completion of year eight will be going into year nine. And about 10 years ago, um, nine, 10 years ago, my wife started to encourage me to go out on my own. And I'm very fortunate that she did that because I had no desire to run my own company. I now have two companies. She has two companies also. Um, and my wife identified that I liked what I did. I liked my clients and my clients seemed to like me. So initially the why was very client centric. And what I mean by that is um, I was a strong advocate. I'm wired that way. Um, when I was a little kid, if there was a fight, I would be the one to intervene. Even though I'm not a big person, I, I would be the one to intervene because I'm just wired as an advocate. So initially, the why earlier in my career um, was client-centric. And then after a couple of years, I had so much success um, that I had to bring on more people. And I, when I first set up Weber Law, it was really just for me. I just set up my own place to have a job. And so it wasn't really a company in, uh, in a legal sense it was, but it wasn't in a practical sense. I, I just created a job. And then a couple of years in, my why started to change because I noticed I was so busy, though I was providing a high level of service for my clients, I knew that there was going to be a cost that I could not bear. Um, so I wouldn't be able to deliver at a high end for too long of a period of time. It's kind of like a doctor in an emergency room. No matter how good you are, if you don't have a team, you're not going to be able to sustain for a long period of time. And I was very fortunate that one of my friends from law school, um, we just ran into each other at a closing. So I wish it was planned, but no, it was just luck or however you want to phrase it. And at the closing, you could tell we were both tired and worn out, and we agreed to have dinner. 
because we hadn't seen each other in a few years. And then that's my business partner, level attorney, Kirsten Lamb. So she joined the team. And within the first year, I still had the same why. But after the first year and bringing on more people, it started to subtly adjust to now developing my team and supporting them. So it's been very interesting the last several years in particular. My why has been more about my team. I still want the team to be client-centric and I get involved to the extent I needed. Um, But I really get excitement out of growing a company, developing my team members, like um, Kirsten Lamb's career, in my opinion, and I believe hers, is markedly different since she joined the team. And my career is markedly different since she joined also. So I've been very good at finding mutually beneficial relationships and growing them, Um, but growing them to the extent that it's fair for both. I tell my newer team members um, and attorneys, I kind of want to support you to the point that you have the most success you can within my team. So it's us working together. Um, But I want to make you so good you could go out and compete against me. And most of my team members get job offers all the time. And they tell me just in case I were to hear otherwise, I'm like, that's good. You're really good. People should be seeking after you. But if I do a good job in supporting them, then then they should feel their career is best served with us. Um, and I I really take very serious. If I ever have to leave to ask them to leave the team. That is usually the hardest part of uh, my year. And it's funny. Normally, you think of be focusing on money and other things. I'm like, no, literally. Um, I just want my team to be the best they possibly could be. It's sort of like sports. I want every year us to be going for the championship and feeling as though we can do that. And that's, that's not every year, every day, but the last few years, it feels like every year we have a shot at the championship. And for me, that I take a lot of pride in that. Yeah, there's a lot of pride to take in that. I mean, as a leader, you want to build your team up to be as good, if not better than you, and eventually pass the torch along if you have to, you know, build somebody up so good that they can't be ignored. Um, and props for that. You know, you are the captain of the team. You're you're the leader at Weber Law, but you can't do it without the teammates. I, I'm wondering in your role, you're kind of a mentor, you're kind of a coach, you're a boss. Um, was there a time where you had a mentor, a coach, or a boss, or someone that you read their books, listened to their radio shows? Where What brought you to where you were today? Because you, you couldn't have done it all on your own, right? What's interesting is in every interview that I do, this is the question that I believe surprises everybody else. Um The closest I had to a mentor was a Supreme Court justice who elevated all the way um, through the court system to our highest court and has since retired. I had a student internship as a 3L, so my last year of law school. And at the end of the internship, she met with me. She met with me at the beginning, the end, and she asked why I didn't reach out to her, you know, to have lunch or pick her brain or anything. And I told her I didn't want to bother her. Um, And it was excellent advice that she gave. And she said, as a licensed professional, there's an expectation that we're supposed to mentor or be mentored. Um, And I hope you learn from this. And I did. Um, My wife has done wonderfully with being a mentor to people and having and being a mentee, being mentored by a number of people. And she also has helped me to understand that. I still don't really have mentors for myself. I interact with some people and several other business owners and lawyers have asked that question, kind of going, in the last several years, you've really accomplished a lot. How are you doing it? And my answer is always consistent um, by observing and reacting. Um, I never even intended Weber Law when I first went out to be real estate focused. That was only half the practice, but I've become much more efficient at generating the work. So I have to react to what I'm best at. Um, And I have made sure to have mentees. 
So I'm usually mentoring at any given time a number of individuals, whether they be lawyers, business people, students, or people that are within their career but not where they want to be yet. Um, and I thoroughly enjoy it. I find it very rewarding. Um, and I tell them the lesson that I learned the hard way. If I had a mentor like me, I'd be far, much farther along in my career. I'm right now mentoring a 2B law student. And uh, I also have been mentoring an attorney at my firm. She is coming up on her fifth year with us. And she's easily as good as I was when I was a 10-year attorney. I'm not being complimentary. She's that good. But it's mm -hmm. because she's been open to being taught. She has, she's intelligent. She has strong opinions, but at the same time is willing to work within the team. And when I find people like that, I, the sky's the limit. Um, and what's nice is I've always said I'm only as limited. I'm, my only limit is my team. I still can keep doing more um, as long as I have strong team members and I have really good team members. So I'm very intrigued to see what the next few years will hold. Um, but unfortunately, I don't have books. I don't read a lot. Um, I don't have people that I follow on um, you know, different types of publications or podcasts. I've tried it. Um, but I find even when I've had, um, like life coaches, I've had some people that want to coach me at no cost just because they find me somewhat interesting, um, and feel that the coaching will help elevate their, uh, abilities. And usually in all those meetings at the end, they're going, I'm not sure if you're going to listen to me or if anything I said is valuable, which I, I acknowledge it was valuable, but I choose to do things in a very unique way. Um, even this year, the way we're doing bonuses, some of my other business friends said, your way of doing things makes no sense. <laughs> other than a buddy of mine in the army, he's very senior in the military and he's been there for many years. And he said, take a very almost military approach to things. Um, which what he means by that is instead of rewarding someone who brings in the most work or someone who does the most work. We try to do a large portion of our reward by the success of the team. Um, Cause it'd be unfair um, if you were to origination is often what lawyers are judged by. So in other words, bringing in work, not necessarily completing work, but I think that's silly because you can originate all day. If someone's not doing the work at a high level, you're not going to continue to be able to originate unless you keep finding brand new people who don't know of your reputation. Um, so I, I've taken a very unique perspective, but at the same time, Kirsten and I, when we were first talking about turning it into a real company, because our careers were not what I would say stellar prior to joining up, we acknowledged one thing had to this, that we'd actually want to work for the company. And that may sound kind of like a there's no I in team type thing. But no, there's been times that she's on vacation or I'm on vacation and there's an emergency that we immediately stop everything. Um, thankfully, they don't happen often. But there's a times where something that can happen that is such an important factor for the team that we have to stop everything and adjust because if we didn't, it wouldn't be a company we wouldn't want to work for. Yeah, might as well build a company that you'd love working at yourself. The teammates are going to love it. Um, you've mentioned a lot on navigating, changing, adapting, not necessarily needing a mentor, but um, thinking for yourself and being able to create new ideas on the fly and pivot and change on the fly. Um, one one additional question, because it's because I want to dive even deeper. Um, COVID-19, it's been crazy. It's been an odd year. It's been an odd 2020. What challenges have you seen throughout the past six months to a year? And um, I'm super curious to hear how you navigated those challenges and accomplished them. Well, good question and definitely relevant with this year. Um when it was first starting to hit, 
So when they were starting to sh um, shut down a little is when I and my team really got together. I got together with my most senior people. I got together with my IT people and said, look, where this is going, we have to prepare for the worst. Um, and one thing that's nice is I'm the sole owner of Weber Law. So when stuff hits the fan, I'm able to make a decision and realize if I was wrong, I made a decision. I did the best I could and I move on and adjust immediately upon new information that would change uh, my position. And I've been very fortunate that over the last, over 2020, I'd say 99 out of 100 decisions I've been made, in hindsight, I wouldn't change. And I'm very fortunate to be able to say that I don't believe there's a lot of people and a lot of the decisions I made were not well supported. And I mean by friends, family, and team members, However, at a certain point, someone has to make a decision. Um, I have found in that first few weeks, we were deemed essential on business day one. There's an application process, which again, I hate the use of the word essential. All jobs are essential at some level. Um, it's just poor, poor name your culture there using that term. That being said, we made certain that we were essential. Um, we worked with about 40 other firms in upstate New York to make sure our competitors were essential, which sounds initially a little odd. Why would you help your competitor? Because um, I had attorneys ask that. And I said, are you crazy? There's not one lawyer in a real estate transaction. We, we need everybody working, not, not just for the health of the industry and the profession. I don't want a competitive advantage <laughs> where I'm dealing essential and uh, peers are not. I had several firms that didn't even know how to apply. So we reached out and Kirsten Lamb's actually the one who came up with the processes and how to best secure that. We shared it with anyone and everybody who would listen. And it was funny. We had some competitors that were very competitive with, and as such, they didn't want to listen to us, who reluctantly within a week reached out and said, uh, by the way, uh, you were mentioning something, would you assist? To which I did. Um, I think that, one, I would hope that I would always do that. But during this year, it, it made it a lot easier to do. Um, in addition to that, not just for Weber Law, I really appreciate the opportunity because I also coach businesses. What's nice is I think by helping others, I learn the most. So I have an unfair advantage that I coach um, often means I get to learn through other people's actions. Right. That immensely. So there are times that I'm helping someone a year later, the same situation. <laughs> so I get those back, but I helped approximately a hundred businesses and individuals um, in the first three months at no cost because they need help. And honestly, as an advocate, I also have to be helping people. So it, it was a mutually beneficial situation. Um, and many of those companies are now still in existence. It was not easy. I myself prepared for a 30% reduction uh, in work in and uh, money in. Uh, we never had that. We've actually had the opposite. Um, the majority of the second half of the year, we've been up 30 to 35%. And I've actually hired five people in the last six to eight weeks, which I was not planning on doing. We're at a volume that normally for real estate, you start in January, you get to the middle of the summer, the end of the summer, you sort of peak, and then you go back down. This year, we started in January, COVID hit, it was a little, uh, what the heck, and then it got busier, 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 and now we're not peaking we're, we're still bringing in and we get to reach our peak, which historically I've tracked since 2013. We've never had this. So I had to hire people. I, I run all the numbers and I'd rather hire people. That must mean we're doing uh, very well and have needs. Hey, congratulations on that. Awesome job, Blake. I, I never go a podcast without paying tribute to Rochester. It's a Rochester Business Connections. We want to connect business to business, business to resident. Um, 
I'm just curious when you take the tie off, it's a weekend, you have time to just chill, relax, mind off work. What in the area or the region are you doing for fun? Where, where would we find you on a Saturday, Sunday night? Well, when it's not COVID, my wife and I often very much enjoy, we live in the city, so we're in the Park Ave area. Uh, we very much enjoy walking the city. We dine at a majority of the restaurants, um, and I, that is one of our things. In addition to travel, we really like what I would call quasi fine dining to fine dining. Um, and we have a number of restaurants that we are we frequent. And I feel the city of Rochester, we're extremely fortunate for all the traveling that we usually do, not this year. Um, we have great food experiences, and Rochester does very nicely for that. So that is one of my uh, hobbies, if you will. Um, a lot of people wonder, because uh, I often at work am dressed nicely. This year I've had a number of times where I'm dressed more casual, which is funny because people are very uh, unaccustomed to that. Uh, but on the weekends, you will catch me not normally at all dressed up like this unless I'm going to a formal. Um, and my wife and I frequently enjoy basically hiking through the city. Um, I, we love it here. Um, and to add to that, uh, we just recently adopted a pet, uh, a dog, uh, and my wife's super excited to have a, a little buddy for her when she's uh, taking her walks. I love it. I love it. Hey, what better time to bring an animal in when we're spending more time at home and we can travel? Um, great companion to have. I, I want to move over to the rapid fire round sure. just to get to know you a little bit better. Some easy, quick one answer to one, a one word to one sentence answers just to get to know Blake a little bit more. Of course. Uh, we'll start with that. Cats or dogs? Uh, dog. Coffee or tea? Tea. Beer or wine? Uh, bourbon. <laughs> bourbon. Okay. Um, favorite season? Summer. Summer. Um, social media platform. Where are you most vocal? <laughs> uh, in my opinion, Facebook. Because I just use Instagram to push to Facebook uh, in reality. Cool. iOS or Android? Iowa. Great. Anything that I should have asked you if I knew a little bit more about your business? Um, no, not necessarily. I thought this was a very nicely done interview. I think we were able to cover the topics we intended. I felt extremely comfortable, and I look forward to, once it's available, promoting it online to hopefully uh, get more knowledge out there for both what you do and for what I do. I'm with you. Uh Total agreement. It was a pleasure having you. We we have to close out with follow-up opportunity. How does someone get in touch with Blake? How do they reach you? Do they do you want them to email you, phone number, socials? What should we do next? Certainly. So it's very easy to reach me. Um, if you were to call my cell phone, it's usually forwarding, so it gets to my team, which is 585-729-7260. Um, if I'm not available, they'll set up a meeting. You can easily email me, which is just B as in Blake Weber, W-E-B-B-E-R, at Blake, T as in Tom, Weber, 2 Bs and Weber .com, or find me on social media. I'm on Instagram and Facebook with frequency. A lot of people follow me there because I'll exhibit um, basically my, my life. So I'll harass my poor wife, who's called the lady with a capital L. Um, we'll explain often where we're going to eat, where we're traveling, and the newest addition to our family, Mia, uh, which is a Chinese crested six year old uh, little lady, um, will soon be exhibited on my social media and probably within a week or so have about a thousand followers. Uh, <laughs> because wow. we're bored, and given that boredom, we want to see something positive this year. I love it, Blake. You're a confident guy. You're an interesting guy. Follow him on social media, guys. And yeah, thanks for coming on the show. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for listening to Rochester Business Connections. Don't forget to share this 
rate, and comment on your favorite platform. You can also email me, ben at balbertmarketing.com. Let's connect soon. Until then, keep thriving, everyone.